Good evening, everyone. And thank you for coming to our League of Women Voters of Norwalk debates. This is our first evening of debates. Tonight, we will be doing two debates, one from seven to eight and one from eight to nine. The first debate will be the mayoral debate. I am the co-coordinator of the Norwalk League and also the president of the State Connecticut League of Women Voters. So welcome. I am introducing you. Our moderator tonight is Jean Rabinow, who has been our moderator in the past, longtime, longtime moderator, uh, longtime League of Women Voters member, as well as someone who worked in our office and has more institutional memory probably than anyone in the state, I would say. Anyway, I would welcome, thank you for coming. Thank you, Beth Siegelbaum is our timer tonight. You can see her in the corner, there's Beth. And thank you to Mary Oster and everyone on the league, Deb Dorenzo, who helped put this evening together so that we can bring this information to you and let you hear the candidates and hopefully get some of your questions answered. I'm gonna turn the, the event over tonight to Jean. She's gonna tell us how the rules and how we're gonna run the evening. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you, Laura. The rules very, are very simple tonight. This is a timed debate. Each of the mayoral candidates will get an opening statement with at a chance to um, answer questions for two minutes for each answer. The opponent will then get 30 seconds to rebut. Whoever goes first, will go second for the next question, first for the third, second for the fourth and so on. So the chance to go first will alternate. At the end of the mayoral debate, each of the candidates will get a three minute closing statement. Beth Siegelbaum will be our timer. The candidates will be able to see her on screen. She will be able to hold up a warning sign when they are, thank you, 30 seconds left to go in their answer or their rebuttal. And she will hold up a red stop sign when time is called. If the candidate is in the middle of a word, I will probably let him finish. All questions have been pre-submitted. There will not be any questions taken during the debate. That having been said, I believe that by luck of the draw, the drawing was held earlier, uh, that Mr. Uh, Rilling will go first. Mr. Rilling. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. And certainly thank you to the League of Women Voters for holding this very, very important forum debate to let people hear what the candidates are thinking and how they plan on moving Norwalk forward in the future. Uh, I am, for one, I'm very proud of what my administration has accomplished in the last eight years. Uh, we've done so many different things uh, uh, to realign city government, keeping taxes down, investing in our education, investing in our school infrastructure, creating a community services division that serves people who are uh, underserved and providing them the access to the services that they want and need but couldn't get before that. So we've had uh, the last year and a half, obviously, has been a very difficult uh, year. Uh, it's been a challenge. I, it, there was no manual on how to uh, deal with the pandemic, but we did it. We worked very hard as a team. We followed the science. We made sure that we did everything that we possibly could because my number one priority or one of my number one obligations is to keep the citizens of Norwalk safe. And I believe we have done that by making the difficult decisions. They're very challenging, sometimes not very popular, but we had to have the courage to make those decisions. And we did. So Norwalk is on the right track. People are starting to notice Norwalk. People are starting to say, I want to live in Norwalk. I want to work in Norwalk. I want to bring my business to Norwalk. Things are happening. And we're excited because there's a vibrancy and excitement that is obvious to people that come to our community. So we want to keep that momentum going. We want to keep things uh, positive. We want to make uh, sure that Norwalk uh, grows economically um, and the vitality uh, of the city is strong and that we continue to the track on which we're on. So 
it, I'm asking for the support of the public to allow me to continue the progress and the momentum we've made. Okay, thank you. Mr. Riddle, and please, yes, you're on mute, good. Uh, good evening, League of Women Voters. Uh, thank you very much for hosting this event uh, and debate. Uh, Harry, thank you for being here and, and debating with me. Uh, I hope to have a very spirited debate. Wish it was in person, but nonetheless, um, you know, just a uh, why I, you know, came to Norwalk and, and choosing to become a Norwalk homeowner uh, in South Norwalk during 2015 and uh, making Norwalk my home was a very easy decision for me. Uh, you know, Norwalk is a beautiful city with a tremendous amount of potential. And as I look forward uh, towards the, my future and the, my next milestone, starting a family, uh, the success and, and direction of Norwalk is of great importance to me, especially over the next five to 10 years, um, as my, chair, my children will inherit whatever uh, that outcome is. So I'm running for mayor to ensure that the direction we take is a, is a successful one. For the last eight years, the greatest issue I, I believe is facing Norwalk is a lack of balance in our, in our city government, efficiency and transparency within our, our city government as well. Uh, between the minefield of, of zoning issues, uh, thank God we're going through a complete overhaul of all those zoning and regulations right now. Um, for homeowners, that, that's been a big issue, but it seems to be a breeze for developers that wanna come into this city and, and build large uh, apartment buildings. And the explosion of the administrative staff, both within City Hall as well as Board of uh, Education, has been a huge issue. So our city government has gotten too comfortable on the backs of taxpayers. And as Ray Reagan famously said, um, he believed that that government was overfed. Um, property taxes account for 90% of our 400, almost $400 million revenue that this city collects. And it's time for a mayor who protects that revenue in a fiduciary manner. That's been my professional career. Uh, since I graduated college is being a fiduciary and managing uh, people's expectations with the utmost care and a white glove service. So I'm running for mayor again to restore the balance to our local government and maintain an open and inviting transparent administration with a keen eye on that fiscal responsibility. That's time. Thank you. Um, next question. The first question uh, will go to Mr. Riddle first. Um, what are your top two priorities for the coming two-year term? Top two priorities. Sure. Um, so uh, the top two uh, is going to be city management, uh, restoring that, that balance and transparency uh, at the city government and returning accountability, as well as improving our educational standards. Uh, as we look at the, the education uh, in Norwalk, um, you know, it's touted that, you know, we're, we're part of uh, the number one in a, in a district representative group. However, uh, that entire a representative group is at the bottom 25% of acad academic performance in Connecticut. So to strive at that level to improve there, um, I think is not good enough. And we need to provide a world-class education system that is on par with our surrounding towns. Uh, it's imperative that uh, the, the mayor take a, a, an interest in our board of education uh, as the Norwalk charter states that he is supposed to be the chairman of the board of education. However, our current mayor has, has not been involved in that. On the city management side, um, again, he's uh, delegated all of his duties as mayor away to his chiefs um, and has not been involved in, in what the city uh, is currently undergoing. And I'm going to be a very active and very involved mayor in this administration and make sure that Norwalk is put on a proper pathway uh, moving forward. All right, Mr. Rilling, same question. Top two priorities for the coming two year term. Thank you. Uh, education is perhaps the most important thing that a mayoral candidate or that a city can do for its students, because if we don't prepare our students for the global economy, the global world, uh, we're, we're sadly, uh, we're letting them down. We've invested more in the City of Norwalk Board of Education and Norwalk Public Schools than any previous administration. And I take issue with the fact that people say that the Norwalk students are underachieving. That is not true. Norwalk students are achieving. We have uh, become the most, uh, uh, we have made more progress than any other city school district in the state of Connecticut in the achievement index. So we are moving forward. We are putting our money uh, where our mouth is and making sure that the teachers have the resources to do what they need to do and that the students have the things that they need in order to achieve and make them develop to their fullest potential. 
we have also um, provided them with the opportunity uh, more quickly than any other city when they had to work remote. We provided them Chromebooks and internet access, and they were able to continue learning. It was a difficult challenge, but we did it. The other thing that I'm trying to do is uh, keep, keep taxes down. If you look at taxes in the city of Norwalk uh, over the past, four, uh, past eight years, we have had lower tax increases than any previous uh, administration, including uh, the one preceding this administration. For instance, in 2014, the first taxing district average tax was $6,293. In 2022, it's 5,762. 5, that's a reduction in average tax of $531. And that's a trend across all districts. In fact, in district, uh, in, a, in the East Norwalk district, the taxes were uh, $9,609. And in fiscal year 2022, it's 7,303. That's a reduction uh, of a significant amount. So we're working hard to keep taxes down, working hard to let the people keep their expendable cash so that they can uh, stimulate our economy. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Riddle, any rebuttal or extension on that? Yes. Um, so on, on the education aspect, it's not a, a question about how much money is being spent. Uh, it's more about what's happening in the actual classroom. And the, the failures of what's going on in, in, in the classroom is cannot be ignored. Uh, the most recent report uh, at the September 28th Board of Education meeting has highlighted that the education uh, scores of, of our kids have decreased uh, exponentially, and it's a scary uh, picture that is being painted right now. So we need to invest more in the classroom rather than a top-heavy administrative level uh, and make sure the kids are getting a, a proper education. Uh, Mr. Rilling, anything further? Yes, uh, that uh, that report came out right after the pandemic and uh, well during the pandemic and referred to uh, distance learning and the, the backslide that the kids had the children had because they were not in the classroom. That's a temporary thing. That's expi that's a, the experience uh, statewide nationwide where young people could not be in the classroom and have that socialization that interaction with each other. And there was obviously a backslide and we need to fix that. All right, thank you both. Next question goes to Mr. Rilling first. What would you do to encourage new businesses to bring new jobs into our city? Thank you. Well, we work very closely with new businesses and we uh, reach out to other businesses and encourage them to come to Norwalk. As I said before, Norwalk is a place that people are starting to take notice of. We have created a, uh, uh, a economic and community development process. The first time it's ever been done. We have a director of uh, tourism and business development. They work with new businesses. They make sure that they are given the, uh, the opportunity to access the resources that they need. Uh, we're trying to get Norwalk back even greater than it was before the pandemic. We're offering small business loans so people who might have struggled during the pandemic can now get back on track and get their business back going. We have a facade program so that businesses and homeowners can uh, get a small uh, loan or a grant to fix the facade and increase their the the make their building look more beautiful, more attractive, and uh, gather people in. So we are a business friendly. We work very closely with the uh, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and we constantly uh, are talking about what we can do to keep the business community strong and vibrant in the city of Norwalk. Uh, we have had over 400 new permits requests of people coming in and bringing their businesses into Norwalk, into this city, because again, they know that Norwalk is the place to be. They know that Norwalk is a place where their business can flourish. And we're encouraging them. We're working with them, reaching out and constantly uh, in communications with new businesses and uh, giving them uh, information about Norwalk so they can make informed decisions. Okay, same question to Mr. Riddle. Yes, I, I think the, one of the most important things about economic development and jobs is our education system. Uh, so by improving that, we immediately make Norwalk more attractive. And, and just a quick note on, on those stats, um, it was actually an in-person, remote, and overall number 
um, that, that is referenced. So it's not just distance learning. It was 1,468 in-person students as well was included in that report. Um, on, on the jobs, uh, I've been a business development officer for uh, most of my career, and this is my strong suit. Um, I know what, what it takes to make sales and uh, put together a business plan in order to go after and make uh, marketing for, for those businesses. We need to market Norwalk better to invite businesses here, to highlight the great parts of it, to improve our infrastructure, uh, to uh, especially uh, eliminating the traffic disaster, which is one of the greatest things that, that a company focuses on uh, when they want to bring their business to a new city. Um, so with the traffic, with uh, proper development and a thoughtful redevelopment on Norwalk's identity, not density, uh, we will be able to bring in new businesses into Norwalk and make it more attractive um, and, and make families want to come here, start small businesses uh, and utilize a lot of the corporate areas that uh, we have available and fulfill businesses needs and, and wants. All right, anything further, uh, Mr. Rilling? Uh, yes, uh, we have a program uh, talking about marketing. We are marketing our local businesses. We have a program called Norwalk Now, where it markets our businesses, gives them free advertising so that they can reach out to their customer base and make sure that they give information that the customers need to know. We encourage people to shop local. It's critically important to support our local businesses, but that marketing program we have is second to none. I don't think there's another one like it any place where we offer free advertising to businesses so that they can make sure that their businesses are flourishing, make sure their businesses are doing well. Okay, uh, Mr. Riddle, anything further? Yeah, COVID has uh, really changed the, the corporate America and, and how they use commercial space. Um, and in addition to that, the parking issue in Norwalk needs to be uh, resolved. Um, in, in my opinion, uh, we pay a lot of taxes here in Norwalk, especially our property taxes on cars. I think it would be uh, a, a tremendous advantage to the business community if we could promote uh, Norwalk citizens who have a car registered in Norwalk get free parking. It's de minimis revenue of the parking authority around 350000 a year uh, in, a, in a $7 million budget. All right, thank you both on that. Next question, we'll start with Mr. Riddle first, and it's a two-parter. What is your position on housing development in Norwalk? How would you balance the impact on infrastructure against the need for more affordable housing? Sure, uh, so Norwalk has grown exponentially over the last eight years under this administration. Uh, and it's very important that, as I mentioned before, we focus more on Norwalk's identity and what it's going to look like in the future to meet the needs of today as well as tomorrow. COVID has significantly changed the landscape in terms of housing and how young millennials are looking at uh, working from home as well as going to the city, um, which in my opinion, I think New York City is never going to recover uh, uh, from its current uh, uh, situation with regards to the commercial space. You have large corporations cutting down on in-person um, uh, desks and, and commercial real estate. So we need to take that into account as we redevelop our city and maintain its identity and not deliver too much density. Um, and we are reaching a critical mass uh, in terms of our traffic situation. Uh, and from what I understand in, in looking back at previous uh, planning and zoning um, meetings and commissions, there was a report of no traffic impact with this development, no traffic impact with this development. And that just simply is not the case, especially where people are now apprehensive about getting on public transportation and being in the vicinity of a, a large number of people in a closed space. So there's more cars on the road now. Uh, and the, these developments that are going up uh, are, are going to have two to three cars in, in each uh, unit. And um, we need to address that appropriately. And as far as the housing needs, we have a, a tremendous amount of housing available. Um, even though most of these developments are at 95 capacity, um, we need to pressure the state to encourage other towns around us to meet that 10% minimum uh, affordable housing, which a lot of the towns surrounding us are currently not at, which we are far above it. All right, um, same question, Mr. Rilling. Well, as Mr. Riddle stated, all these uh, new developments are about 95% full. So it shows people want to come to Norwalk. We're focusing our de uh, development 
on the transit oriented area where we can have multimodal hubs of transportation where people can move, not necessarily need a car. We're getting young millennials into town. They want to work and they want to live in the downtown area. So we're focusing a lot on developing our urban core. We are also uh, making sure that our infrastructure is safe and adequate. So when there's a new development, the developer has to add, uh, improve the infrastructure around the development. And with the new, uh, uh, more efficient uh, plumbing and, and those kinds of things and people being more responsible in their use of water, if you ask the uh, water districts, they're saying that they're actually using less water now than they did 10 or 15 years ago. Same thing with our wastewater treatment plant. Our wastewater treatment plant is capable of handling twice the load it handles now. So we're in really, really good shape. And uh, we're also doing uh, a zoning overhaul so that we can make sure that our zoning is consistent, is uh, uh, helps people so that they can move into areas that they want to move in, that we can use our land wisely. We're looking at so many different things. We have young people who leave to go to college. We want them to come back. We need to have as much affordable housing as we can have. We're also looking at um, efficiency apartments uh, uh, so that people can have an efficiency or an in-law apartment in their home and bring their children back in so that they can work here in Norwalk, grow here in Norwalk, and uh, be able to afford a house here in Norwalk. Um, Mr. Riddle, anything further on this? Yes, perhaps this is a, a generational disconnect, but uh, the, my friends in, in my generation all have cars, and uh, when they're not using their cars, they'll use an Uber or a Lyft, um, which contributes to additional cars on the road. So uh, no one I know and, and no one um, in their 20s, which, which is a vast amount that, of friends that I have, uh, utilize the public transportation system, especially the buses. Um, so, you know, the answer is, is a young millennials not wanting to uh, have cars or, or use cars is just simply incorrect. And uh, our infrastructure is completely, uh, you know, it has not grown with our, our development. Um, Mr. Rilling, anything further on this? Well, that's just wrong. Our infrastructure is very adequate. Uh, our infrastructure is being improved by the people who make, uh, who develop these properties. And um, as Mr. Riddle just pointed out, young millennials use Uber and other kinds of transportation. And therefore, a lot of them do not need to have cars. In fact, there was research showing that a lot of the millennials don't even bother getting a license because they want to live in the downtown area. Uh, we're making better use of uh, transportation, of bicycles, of uh, those kinds of things that people need. Okay, thank you both. Um, the next question will go to Mr. Rilling first. And it is, the city's tree ordinance is being amended. The plan is to increase the number of trees to be replanted for every tree removed on public property. There are still problems with the number of trees removed by Eversource for utility line clearing. How will you support the new tree ordinance? Well, we're supporting the new tree ordinance with money. I found it kind of amusing. We planted 18 trees on Wilton Avenue and my opponent said he believes about 15 cars a day go up and down Wilton Avenue. Wilton Avenue is a, a very, very busy street. Uh, I used to, gr I grew up in the area of Wilton Avenue, so I know exactly how busy it is, but we're trying to improve our tree canopy because trees are so important to a vibrant city. They provide shade, they provide oxygen. Uh, they're so important to us, and we want to make sure that we keep, uh, keep planting trees uh, more and more uh, uh, every year. We have put more money into our tree budget than we has ever been in there before. We're applying for grants also so we can plant more trees. So we are supporting it by planting more trees, putting more money into it, getting the public involved, helping the public uh, get, volunteer their time. So when we put trees in, we get them, the public is stepping up and helping us take care of those trees. If you don't take care of the trees, they're going to die and they're not going to be uh, healthy. So we wanna make sure that we get the public involved, we educate the public, and we, uh, as I said, put more money into the tree budget and plant as many trees as we possibly can over the next 10, 15, or 20 years. Norwalk has been a tree city for quite some time right now. 
We need to live up to that name and make sure we plant more and more trees. And uh, as I said, fund, fund the planting of the trees. Mr. Riddle? Oh, I, I completely agree. The environment um, is one of the most important things uh, of, as for a vibrant city. Uh, and we need to increase our tree canopy. It's my opinion that, you know, if a developer is going to come into to this city, uh, there should be an ordinance that for every tree that they take down in order to put a, a large structure, mixed use commercial or re uh, residential, uh, they should be uh, required to plant 10 trees elsewhere in the city. Uh, I think this is, is it's very important for clean air and clean water uh, to ensure our waterways are, are properly managed. Um, the environment is absolutely something that we need to protect. And the trees, you know, as, as the mayor pointed out, provide shade and are a part of a beautiful, vibrant city. And they contribute to our parks and, and beaches. It's the aesthetics that make Norwalk attractive. Being by the water, having a large tree canopy, having the Norwalk River Walk, as well as our, our trails that go all the way up through Wilton to Danbury. Um, this needs to be protected and we need to ensure our environment is protected. All right, anything further on this, Mr. Rillen? Yeah, just that uh, this administration has supported the tree uh, planting of trees far greater than any administration before us. We know it's important. We've also been very active in supporting the Norwalk River Valley Trail by investing uh, dollars in it and working with the state and working with the Western Connecticut Council of Governments in order to make sure that the uh, the uh, uh, the Norwalk River Valley Trail is connected and that people have a beautiful place to walk, a beautiful place to ride bicycles and so forth. Thank you. Anything further on this, Mr. Riddle? Mr. Riddle? Nope, we're good. The environment's right. a beautiful thing. All right. Um, the next question goes to Mr. Riddle first, and it's another environmental question. What can be done to create a master plan to reduce the increased velocity and volume of the Five Mile River, which is causing unprecedented property damage in West Norwalk and Roaton? Um, and the questioner notes, there are factors other than climate change creating these conditions. Well, certainly uh, we need to address our, our infrastructure issue. Um, as someone told me one time, uh, water is the most powerful and destructive force of nature uh, that we encounter as humans. Uh, it, it's greater than, than wind, it's greater than the sun or fire. Uh, and we need to thoughtfully look at our rivers, uh, our waterways, the way we're developing our city and, and ensuring that that water is routed properly and safely so we don't have rivers overflowing and causing destruction like that bridge that's still out of, out of uh, service right now. Uh, that, that's a main thoroughfare between uh, Rowayton and uh, uh, West Norwalk. So it's imperative that we protect these roads from erosion, uh, from a, a environmental damage as well as the runoff from these developments and uh, whether that's uh, dirt or, or bacteria that's in the streets running into our rivers. Again, like I mentioned uh, when we were talking about the trees, it, it is up in utmost importance protecting our waterways, ensuring clean air and clean water uh, is, is essential for, for life. And uh, we need to think very greenly about that in, in the way that we protect those areas uh, and pre uh, prevent erosion. And we need to seriously look at our rivers for uh, issues around all the bridges uh, and attack them in a proactive manner rather than a reactor, reactive manner. All right, um, Mr. Rilly. Thank you. Uh, we have a program we work closely with the state where there's a schedule for looking at all the bridges in the city of Norwalk, some of the smaller bridges, the larger bridges, and there's a plan in place to in, uh, evaluate them, inspect them to make sure that they're structurally sound. And when they find problems, we have uh, a program that they work on those bridges. So we're working on that. Uh, there can be no doubt that we're seeing things we never saw before. Climate change is real. When I get a call from somebody who says, you know, I had flooding in my basement. I've lived here 35 years and I've never had water in my basement before. And it goes to show that when you have seven and a half inches of rain in a very short period of time, right after you had uh, uh, four inches of rain, the ground is saturated. There's no place for the water to go. We're currently in the process of a citywide study on flooding and how we can mitigate flooding throughout the city. 
and how we can uh, uh, make sure that we do everything that we possibly can to address the climate change issue in a positive way. The environment is critically important to us. We need to make sure that we treat Mother Earth well because Mother Earth is here to take care of us and we're the only creatures that can destroy Mother Earth. So we need to be very judicious in our flooding studies, making sure that we take those studies, find ways to mitigate flooding so that people don't have these concerns again. But again, this is clearly a problem and it's clearly uh, a, a lot to do with the climate change issue, not only in the city of Norwalk, there was flooding all over the state of Connecticut, all over the tri-state area uh, during the last storm. And it's really something that needs to be addressed. And it's gotta be in partnership, not only with the city, but with the state and with the federal government. All right, anything further on this, Mr. Riddle? Yes, uh, you know, in, in regards to the Row 8 and Avenue bridge, um, you know, that washout, it, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, that bridge was suffering uh, from previous erosion. And, and it's, it's funny, the mayor says that there's a, a proactive uh, a plan in place to review all of these things. Well, it, it seems to me that this has been reactive. Uh, we also need to work with our neighbors in Darien uh, to address the issues with our five mile river. Um, I'm, I'm curious if there's any been uh, cross planning with, with Darien on this issue as well. Uh, in addition, Norwalk, a lot of areas are in a flood zone because we are so close to sea level. Okay. I'm afraid that's time on the rebuttal. Anything further, Mr. Rilling? No, I think we're, uh, it, it's incumbent upon us to do everything we can. We are doing uh, the things we need to do. Um, I would say that the, uh, the Row 8 Avenue bridge was not crumbling, that the storm that hit that bridge was so powerful. Mr. Riddle admitted himself, there's nothing more powerful than water. It's more powerful than fire and more powerful than wind. And when you have that uh, intense rainfall and flowing down the river for such an extended period of time with water flowing over the roadway, uh, it's going to have a, a, an effect on that bridge. All right, thank you both. Next question will go to Mr. Rilling first. Would you support or oppose a cannabis consumption area in Norwalk? If you support it, where should it be put? Could you say that again? I heard, I didn't. Sorry. Would you support or oppose a cannabis consumption area in Norwalk? If you support it, where should it be put? Well, the state of Connecticut just legalized uh, recreational marijuana. Uh, medical marijuana has been uh, legal for quite some time now. Uh, the only outlet right now, I believe, the closest one is in Danbury. Uh, it's, it's a tough situation. We have to make sure that if we do allow a cannabis outlet in the city of Norwalk, it's got to be monitored correctly. It's got to be uh, located in an area that's not near any schools, and it's got to be limited to the number that we're going to have in town. Uh, it's something that uh, we lo we're looking at. Uh, do we have a moratorium until we can make sure that we are going to do it properly rather than just rush into something? So uh, location is going to be critically important uh, if and when there is a cannabis outlet in the city of Norwalk. So it's a, it's, it's a tough question. It really is uh, up to the community. Uh, it's up to uh, the, uh, the, the city uh, where we're going to locate it and when it's going to happen. But it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing with which to deal. I know there are people that are very much in favor of it. There are people that are very much opposed to it. Uh, as you can imagine, being a chief of police, um, it's, it's a struggle for me because uh, we have been, uh, you know, uh, working on these kinds of issues for years. Uh, and so uh, it's a struggle for me. It's a, it's a challenge. All right. Thank you. Same question, Mr. Riddle. Yes. As we approach a grim milestone that was just released, um, 96,000 people overdosed on opiates uh, during the pandemic and, and in quarantine. Um, we as a society have a major issue uh, with the opioids. And it, it seems to me that the science is showing that uh, medical marijuana specifically is very good at treating pain management. Um, so I would support a, a cannabis location in uh, uh, Norwalk uh, with the thoughtful measures in place. So, you know, I agree with the mayor, we need to put it in an area that's not close to schools uh, and, and 
enforcing the regulations. But I think it's going to be a big boon uh, of tax revenue that we can harness, as we've seen in our neighbors in New York and Massachusetts. Um, I have personal friends of mine. You know, I, I don't partake in that myself. However, uh, they're they're willing to take the drive to Massachusetts. So that is revenue that we can be having here in Norwalk if we do it thoughtfully and have the right approach uh, with the right community outreach and, and understandings and education and campaigns uh, to educate people on the dangers of marijuana. However, I do think that uh, alcohol is actually a more dangerous drug than marijuana. Um, and as well as with the opioid crisis, again, the medical studies shows that CBD and, and useful uh, can, can reduce the amount of opiate deaths that we have. Uh, we need to certainly address that. That is an endemic in and of itself. All right. Um, anything further on this, uh, Mr. Rilling? Yes. And when we uh, have this uh, dispensary in the city of Norwalk, we need to also uh, include educational things for young people so that we can educate them to the uh, the challenges or the problems that go along with drug use. And we need to provide resources to people who are addicted. Nonviolent addicted people need help. They need to be uh, uh, treated and we need to make sure that they get that treatment, whether it's uh, uh, through uh, counseling, whether it's through uh, medically treated uh, uh, addiction. Okay, um, anything further on this, Mr. Riddle? Yeah, um, I, I agree with the mayor as, as well. Um, as a family who suffered um, uh, with the opioid crisis, my, my older sister got addicted to um, uh, painkillers and it, that devolved into heroin usage. But thankfully, she's about four years clean now. Um, you know, I, it, I couldn't help but think that if we had CBD and the medical process then 10 years ago, uh, that this could have been avoided. So I agree, we need to educate people on the dangers uh, of drugs in, in a whole aspect, um, as I learned when I was a child and, and I've stayed away. All right, thank you both. Um, the time constraints being what they are, I do not believe we have time for a full-scale question with rebuttals before the closing statements. But if you would mind um, just answering briefly on this question, um, we could start with Mr. Riddle. Um, what, if anything, would you do to encourage building a major war memorial to be prominently displayed in our downtown? Our history, especially in, in our military, should be revered. Um, and, and this is an utmost importance. You look at the history in our schools, it's not being taught properly. And, and we need to honor our veterans and our veteran community and take care of our veterans, not just locally, but statewide as well as federally. And I think having a memorial, bringing attention to the sacrifices the, the great men and women of this country have made for our country, uh, we need to certainly honor them with that memorial. And I'll do everything in my power to make sure that that happens. Mr. Rilling? I agree. You know, Norwalk does it right for our veterans. Uh, we do so much for veterans, but we also could do more. We, uh, I'm the first one that created a veterans memorial or a veterans liaison uh, position uh, and put Jeff DeWitt in there. And he's done remarkably well. We help veterans access services that they need. Veterans come back from war, especially Vietnam veterans, uh, World War II, Korea. They come back and they're, they're challenged. They have emotional uh, issues, they have physical issues, and we need to help them. But a war memorial is absolutely a, a critical thing that we ha can have so we can show people the sacrifices that our veterans made. Last evening, I was at a dinner uh, honoring the Vietnam veterans who came home, the people that were angry at them for doing what the country asked them to do. And it, it's really uh, a shame that they had to endure that. I'm a military veteran. I served in the military for four years. It was a, a, a wonderful experience for me. I went in a boy and came out a man. Uh, and, but we need to make sure that all our veterans get everything that we can do. And a war memorial is absolutely critical. All right, thank you. I'm going to dispense with rebuttals or extensions on this one because we have now reached the point at which both candidates will be given a three minute closing statement. Uh, by the luck of the draw, this one starts with Mr. Rilling first. Well, thank you very much for the League of Women Voters. Thank you to my opponent for uh, being here this evening and engaging in civil discourse uh, on our vision for the city. Uh, I stand on my record. The past eight years, 
we have done so much for the city of Norwalk. We have downsized our workforce, yet we have kept up services. We have put our money and spent our money very, very judiciously, making sure we protect our taxpayers. We have started, uh, we've seen development in the city of Norwalk, working with developers, working with uh, uh, the planning and zoning department. We're doing, we're, we're having smart development that's bringing people into our downtown urban core. We're taking the uh, our, our business community is growing. Our tax base is shifting from residential to business. And that's a good thing because we need to make sure that young people, older people can afford to live in this city. Uh, we are uh, very proud of what we have done. We, uh, as I said, we Norwalk is one of the fastest growing cities in the state of Connecticut because people have started to take notice of us. We are investing in education. We're building new schools. We're focusing on uh, giving our students and our teachers infrastructure they can be proud of. We've built the Ponis Ridge School addition. We're now renovating Jefferson as new. We've got plans to build a new Cranberry School, but most important on my list is a new South Norwalk School so that the District 99 children don't have to get up at 5.30 in the morning to get bussed across town and, and have to come back the same way in the afternoon and not have that emotional social connection to people who might live right next door. They can't get involved in after school programs. So that's critically important. Our environment is extremely, extremely important. We are focusing on clean energy, how we can protect our environment planting more trees, buying hybrid vehicles for the city, uh, making sure that we take advantage of solar. We have a, a partnership with uh, Solar for All by uh, uh, Posigen to make sure that the average citizen can afford solar on their home. We wanna make sure that we take advantage of all those opportunities. It has been an honor for me to be the mayor of the city. I don't believe that I'm entitled to this job. I believe that every single day I have to be out in the community, earning the respect of the people, showing them that I'm here working for them. Every single day I have to earn their vote. I believe we have moved Norwalk in the right direction. We are prepared to continue that progress to make sure that Norwalk continues to be the most vibrant city in the state of Connecticut. And again, it's an honor for me to be here, an honor to have been elected a city that I was born and raised in a Norwalk Public Schools uh, son. It's been an honor for me to be the mayor. Thank you. Mr. Riddle, closing statement. Yes, thank you very much, uh, League of Women Voters, for hosting. Thank you, Harry, for the spirited civil debate. Uh, you know, Norwalk, over the last two years, our communities, businesses, and schools were forced to rethink how we live, work, and socialize. We felt deeply the negative impact of COVID-19 and directly experienced how our elected leaders' decisions impact our families, schools, and livelihoods. The challenges we are trying to overcome as a city today are due to the current administration's failures and flawed vision for the future of Norwalk. It is clear to me Harry Rilling does not serve in the best interests of Norwalk residents. Harry stated in his 411 guide that he plans to build Norwalk back better. Has eight years not been enough time? As Joe Biden was recently in Hartford promoting his disastrous Build Back Better agenda, Harry plans to introduce the same policies that will destroy Norwalk as well as America for generations to come. Harry is focused on partnering with developers to increase density to solve Norwalk's problems, further eroding Norwalk's identity. Does he have any, does he have any sense of the traffic disaster and the lack of infrastructure to support his overdevelopment? I think Norwalk has had enough. Education is a major factor of real estate values and when families are looking to move. Our education system is failing our children and academic performance has dropped more than 20% since 2019. 63% of our high school students failed the college and career readiness exam. 44% of them did not go to college. When we measured ourselves against the state, all city schools rank in the bottom 25% in academic performance. And Harry thinks by saying we are number one of this group suppresses our poor performance while we are surrounded by four out of the top five best school districts in this state. Harry may be content with being the best of the worst, but I will not accept that as your mayor. The Norwalk Charter places the mayor as chairman of the Board of Education, and thus far, Harry has excused himself of that duty. 
As your mayor, I see it as a fiduciary responsibility to be at every board meeting and be the voice for parents to ensure our children are succeeding with a world-class education. Norwalk is a beautiful place with amazing potential, and we need a renewed focus on identity, not our density. I'm running for mayor because Norwalk's future depends on fresh ideas to grow economic development, improve our schools, and deliver a school to South Norwalk, fully redefine meet the needs of today and tomorrow. And speaking of the needs, our public safe safety is in dire need. Our, our police and fire department, while this city's population has exploded, has largely stayed the same. And so we need to make an investment as a city to increase the numbers on our police force, as well as our fire department, to meet the needs of the community and the, the massive amounts of new apartment buildings that they have to respond to. And I will usher in a new era of leadership, opening City Hall immediately, all services, no more work from home, and every single uh, city meeting in person in the, in the council chambers, and, and bring fr a fresh perspective with a new approach to eliminate stale, ineffective policies. Thank you both. Thank you both very much. Uh, this concludes the debate for mayor of Norwalk. Thank you, Jean. And thank you all for attending the mayoral debate. We will continue the Common Council debate beginning at eight o'clock. Thank you very much. Thank you.